Hello, okay, this is another very important video. This video is about the Elijah, Mr. Herbert W. Armstrong. You saw me talk about this, the, um, the Elijah candle. One of the important candles in the base of the Yon Sui faith. Mr. Armstrong was the Elijah. He accepted an award as the Elijah and, and, and mentioned in, himself as the Elijah many times. In 1975, he uh, said something significant would happen. And when nothing happened, he lost. He was the, the leader of the Worldwide Church of God. And uh, it just dispensated and the, the great apostasy, the falling away happened as prophesied in the Bible. But Rastas who were already following him um, were like, oh, wait a minute, 1975, that's when Eile Selassie disappears from history. That's a very significant year. And Bob Marley wrote the song, Jaw Live. So it was a very significant moment. And then uh, the prophet Gad said, from now on, Rasta is the rewriting of the Bible on the tables of your heart. The 12 tribes of Israel founded by the prophet Gad studied all the books of Mr. Armstrong. They saw him as kind of like uh, Jonah, you know, not, not fully stepping up to where he was supposed to be with, with Eile Selassie. He was friends with Eile Selassie. He was friends with Eile Selassie. They exchanged gifts and everything. And, and Mr. Armstrong wrote a book, a, a, an article in his magazine, the Plain Truth magazine, that was called The Man Who Could Have Changed the World. And it was about Eile Selassie. And he realized, he, he, um, he realized that he was, he, he was uh, a little off on all his teaching. So he wrote the book, The Mystery of Ages, considered his most important book. The Mystery of Ages is kind of like a greatest hits. He like retells his whole message. He has like so many books, what like, Probably like 30 books or something like that. I've read most of them. And um, he, he, re, re, he writes this one. It's, it's a little bit harder to get, but you can get it if you try hard enough. It's a really cool book. It just kind of, it goes over everything. You know, it's like a, everything, he, he retells his story, puts everything back into perspective as the Elijah. So the Elijah is told to come in Malachi 4 four, five through six, to, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the children to the fathers. One of his main books is called The U.S. and Britain Commonwealth in Bible Prophecy. And in that, he just, he, he, and he, he, uh, he definitely does that. He'll turn your heart to your fathers, you know. And uh, he also is, uh, is the Elijah and prepares the way. So he has um, uh, many great books. That, um, and like like the one called the Middle East and Prophecy talks about how the King of the North is the is the uh, the Pope and the King of the South is Eile Selassie and how what's going on in the Middle East is really about a war between the Pope and Eile Selassie and then all all of his 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 books about the like the Book of Revelation unveiled at last who is the Beast the Mark of the Beast all these books, the, the, the timing of everything is 100% in sync with, with the, the opening of the seals of the Lion of Judah, that's Eile Selassie. So the thing is, is that nowadays everybody's going to be like, oh, look at him. He's, he looks just like the leader of another church. He's just a, you know, many people will say, I'm not going to listen to one word of Herbert Armstrong because... He's talking about the Bible, and the Bible is just a bunch of crap, you know? And, I mean, it's it's not a very cool thing to be listening to someone like that. But the thing is, is if you if you understand, your, if you know yourself well enough to know ego, and if you really are trying to find the truth, now remembering that all truth is really a controlled illusion, that there's three sides to the truth, my side of the truth, your side of the truth, and then the side of the truth standing there the whole time. Everything's a perspective, okay? 
So by absorbing his perspective, it becomes really obvious why part of Jaws' plan was that, uh, that Herbert Armstrong be the Elijah, which is the highest rank of prophet you can be. His, and in some cases, what, it, what he's all about is if you look at my playlist, the, the Living Spiral, and you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the different of a um, personal development in, in a person, um, that the different levels of spiral dynamics, you know, there's red spiral, there's blue spiral, then green spiral, you know, there's the different things. And each one is, a pers is, is important and they all build on each other and life is really just a spiral progress of learning and that's the purpose of life, to, to learn and to know thyself. And so, uh, the blue spiral, the blue spiral is, is the, are the people that see everything as black and white, that they, they believe the Bible is the word of God, and they don't question it, they don't wonder who wrote it, and they think that everybody has to live exactly like the Bible says that. And we're in the next stage after that. That's something out of the past. So... All prophecies, the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible. Now, it wasn't the one that was written last, but in the story flow of the Bible, it ends with the book of Revelations. And it ends with the millennium of peace, that, that mankind will finally learn our lesson and will stop using war, will finally unite unity and diversity under, uh, under one government in kind of like a UN type organization where where we have a higher loyalty to our world citizenship and then a secondary loyalty to our national citizenship appreciating diversity and having lots of loyalty that that makes it so there's no war that will outgrow this and then part of that is to break out past the idea of scripture being the word of God and that God's a man with a beard in the sky jaw is something within so that's how the story ends. It's called the end of times. You know, if you listen to the, what what it calls this moment, these moments, and it being the last book, it's the end of times, meaning it's the end of that era of scripture and God being a man with a beard in the sky. It's time to put the Bible, to rewrite it on the tables of our heart and put it away and learn how to talk to our guardian angel and get to know ourselves because it's the, the idea of scriptures out of date and the idea of of priests and and the church in Sardis and all this is it's out of date. The only way to really put it behind you is with Mr. Armstrong, or you can dedicate your whole life to knowing the Bible. But if you use Mr. Armstrong, he he prepares you for Eli Slossy, just like John the Baptist prepared you for Jesus, right? Like when you study Jesus, you don't study the teachings of John the Baptist, who is his Elijah. Right? You don't you know about John the Baptist, but you study the teachings of Jesus. Same thing here. We you know, you study the teachings of Mr. Elijah, and he teaches you what the Bible says, he teaches you where we came out of what and what why we believe what we believe, and he, he teaches you how to put that behind you. Like for example, he doesn't believe in the Trinity. The Trinity is like the whole foundation of my whole belief. How can I believe He's the Elijah and disagree with him on what the, on the Trinity. I just he, he says marijuana is a bad thing. I think it's the the holy sacrament. I mean I disagree with Mr. Armstrong a lot, but by listening to him teach me about the other side of the argument. Remember, there's my side of the truth, your side of the truth, and the side of the truth. He it's always useful even when you disagree with him. It's always useful to absorb his message, because his message, he calls it the plain truth, meaning it's what the Bible says. His job is just to teach you what the Bible says. His job isn't, isn't to teach you what the truth is. He thinks it is, but his job is not to teach you the truth. His job is, is to teach you the plain, plain truth about what the Bible says, so that you can know the book put it behind you, and that prepares you for putting Eile Slossy in proper perspective. Then you can study Eile Slossy. Then it becomes all about studying the life of Eile Slossy, which is more relevant to the issues of our day. You know, world peace and how religion's out of date and all the teachings of Eile Slossy. You know, if you just jump straight to Eile Slossy, you can still learn things, but 
then you end up just hating blue spiral people and that's not really the way to do it. You gotta love all the different stages, all the different parts, know all the perspectives. To love is to overstand, you know? So it's, it's really important. In Mr. Armstrong's book, Who is the Beast? Another edition, Who or What is the Beast? He breaks down a chart of what all the things mean, okay? Again, when you go, with, so if Eilis Selassie is the Lion of Judah, then there's like a million different ways to interpret the book of Revelations. If you run to the Baptist, they say, well, this is what this, this is what this means. This is what the horns mean. This is what the different heads of the beast mean. This is what the horror means on the, the rides of the beast. If you go to the Mormons, they'll tell you what they mean. No matter who you go to, they're going to tell you what the symbols of the book of Revelations mean, what the apocalypse means. The apocalypse, another, it's the book of apocalypse or the book of Revelation, same thing. So everybody interprets the apocalypse in a different way. But if Eile Selassie is the Lion of Judah that comes in the cloud of incense, of ganja incense, because whoever this God will be, some people believe he literally will come in the sky. That's the rapture. We know that's not really what it says. I mean, people that believe in the rapture, haven't. they don't really know the Bible for crap. The, the Lord comes in the cloud of smoke all through the Bible, Moses' day and all through it, comes in a cloud of incense. It's ganja smoke. Has to be born of Ethiopia, Psalm 87. Has to have the Ark of the Covenant. Has to be given a golden crown and establish a government. That's why they mocked Jesus with a, thorn, a crown of thorns. They said, if you're John incarnate, how come you weren't given a king, a crown, and, and establish a government? That's because he wasn't here to do that part. That was what the next advent Eile Selassie would do. Okay, so if that's true, if Eile Selassie really is this Lion of Judah, then it, it's kind of a timing thing. Once you decide who the Lion of Judah is, only that only the Lion is worthy to open the seals. So now you can interpret the seals, and now you can put the chronology in place, and you can time everything so you'll know how to interpret the different parts. So Mr. Armstrong is in 100% sync with the life of Eile Selassie. So be, by studying what he says the apocalypse is about, it puts into perspective of what it would mean if Eile Selassie really is the Lion of Judah. So here it says a chart showing the prophecies of reign of the Gentile kingdoms. So, Dan, so the book of Revelations is based on a revelation given to Daniel. So the book of Revelations is a repeat of it's it's an it's a it's a vision that um, that John the Revelator was given by Jesus on the island of Patmos, but it's the same revelation that Daniel was given in the Old Testament long ago. So Daniel two, the image, the head of gold, the beast, and arms of silver. See these are the different. The different symbols, the four beasts of the, of the book of Daniel, the first beast, the second beast, see, okay, and then, okay, so it breaks down all the different, the different things, so the head of the beast, it's mentioned of the four beasts, it's mentioned here, the, the first beast, it's mentioned there, and what is it? Well, how is the, the event fulfilled in prophecy? The, the head of the first beast is the Chaldean Empire, Babylon. Okay? The, the beast of, of that, the second beast, is the Persian Empire. The belly and thighs of brass, the third beast, the leopard. is Greece under Alexander the Great and four divisions. The deadly wound of Revelations 13. The fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD. The first horn, because it has 
three horns and a little horn. Also, the first horns mentioned there. The three horns mentioned here is the Vandals. Second horn. Third horn. The little horn. Fourth horn. Fifth horn. Sixth horn. So again, this is Daniel, the sixth horn mentioned in Daniel. Mentioned in Revelations. Where am I? The sixth horn right there. Three headed, the third head written by the woman, Roman Empire, seventh horn, the eighth horn. The one, there's one is, and one is yet to come. So as you can see, like, it would take you your whole life to figure this out. You'd have to go get a degree in history, and, I mean, you just wouldn't, I mean, would you want to take this much time? It's obvious why Jah has an Elijah. So, you know, like the things you learn with Mr. Armstrong are priceless. You, if you follow the path of Rastafari, you will, oh my gosh, you will get to love Herbert Armstrong. And you'll see Mr. Armstrong and, and Eilis Slossia as, as, a, as one. This is another great book written by a Rasta, Callan Ray Selassie where he goes over the opening of the seals. I go over this in a lot better detail on, on the, the Dragonfly Sutra. The chapter that goes over the life of Eilis Selassie, I go over great detail how each seal, how it was opened. But the first seal, Eilis Selassie opened the, all, all the seals, of course, but there's a diff, there's the four horsemen. The, the rider of the white horse is Eilis Selassie. And the first seal was opened, it says, uh, a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's why he's called the conquering lion of Judah, because he's the rider of the white horse who goes forth conquering and to conquer. This is when he, he won a, a significant battle before the world even really knew who he was that made it possible for him to get the crown. For him to become emperor of Ethiopia, he fought the the, the and won the armies of uh, Ross Michael, a duke in, of Ethiopia. The rider of the second, the rider of the red horse, is Adolf Hitler. And Eilis Slossi opened this seal when he went 
So what happened was the Mussolini went to Ethiopia with his armies illegally and, and took over Ethiopia. And uh, they, they were, he was going to kill every illegally against the laws of the League of Nations, was going to kill all the Ethiopians and everything. So Eilis Slossi had to go into exile and he went before the League of Nations and gave a speech in 1936. That speech was the opening of the second seal. In this, it talks about the rider of the red horse. Uh, and it went on another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that's Hitler, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. The great sword that Hitler had was the Spear of Destiny the spear that pierced the side of Jesus on the cross. He used to go to a museum in Italy all the time, and he really wanted the spear of destiny. And uh, finally, the Italian government uh, gave it to him, and he, it was something he wanted real bad, so he had the great sword. So again, I'll, I'll leave a link that goes over the life of Eilis Slossiae. You would have to study his whole life to really understand the opening of the seals again. There, there's seven seals, and only the Lion of Judah is worthy to open the seals. So pretty much you have to, once Herbert Armstrong has prepared you for Ali Slossiae, then you have to study the seven seals so that you know why the earth is the way it is. These are all teachings. It explains things, okay? Um, Harry S. Truman is the rider of the black horse. Um, in, uh, in my, uh, if you will look at the playlist, I'll leave a link to that too, called the, the USA history. I, it goes over, it, it's, a uh, it goes over for that. It pretends that you know about the opening of the seals. It goes over Harry S. Truman and it goes over Hitler. It goes over the different, uh, people and, and, and it, you'll, you'll definitely see that Harry S. Truman is the rider of the black horse. And you'll see why. You can even scroll down to the to the parts about Harry S. Truman. So Herbert, uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Eilis Selassie opened the third seal when he gave a speech. So the Eilis Selassie when he opened the second seal said, "Hey, you got to come and help Ethiopia. If what good's the League of Nations if you don't help us? We're a smaller nation. Italy's kill, conquering us illegally." And everybody was scared. It was, this was one of the sparks that started World War II. And everybody was scared. And then it, it didn't matter anyway, because then World War II started and the League of Nations fell apart. So then, out of the ashes of the League of Nations, they made the United Nations. And in 1949, Eilis Selassie, the only head of state to give a speech both at the League of Nations and the U United Nations, gave a speech at the United Nations and said, look, if we're going to have this millennium of peace, this uh, world peace, we have to make these this concept work of uniting together in an organization like this. If it's not going to, you know, we were hoping to be the League of Nations, but, that, but we didn't live up to it. Now this is the United Nations. If you guys don't live up to it, it's not going to work either. Okay? So he gave that speech in 1949, opened the third seal. The rider of the black horse is Harry S. Truman. Okay, and now the, the fourth seal. Eile Slossie, I opened the fourth seal. Dwight D. Eisenhower is the rider of the pale horse. So the, the black horse is because like Sputnik, there was all these, this, the black horse was about death. The red horse is about, uh, was about um, socialism and Nazism and, 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 and the war like that. The revival of the Roman Empire and, and the red dragon. The black horse is about death and all these horrible weapons, the atom bomb and all this. The the pale horse is pale because it's about the Cold War, okay? And uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower is the writer of that. In 1954, Eilis uh, Slossie went to America and gave a speech and opened the fourth sill. In that speech he says, hey, you know, we got to get the program together if we're going to have this world peace, okay? With with Rasta and with all this, the whole point of Eilis Selassie and the Elijah and all this is world peace. Once we have world peace, we can come together and we can fix our problems, environmental problems, social problems. We can unify in one love and 
we can make this work, but war is war and apathy and and ego and all these things are just destroying everything. We got to get over that first. So Eilis Lassia came to America and gave a speech and said, the reason there's wars and everything is because of the bigger nations. They're not following the program. The bigger na nations need to help the smaller nations. And basically kind of chewed everybody out. The fifth seal, the fifth seal is different. So now we have the four horsemen. Every, the stage is set, the situation's there. Rasta is born and set. There's people chanting down Babylon, growing dreadlocks, smoking ganja. The Lord Jah, the Lion of Judah, is coming in the clouds. The program's set, and, and the world will never be the same again. And, you know, this is creating the world that we live in now. So what Babylon did is they said, we got to stop this Rasta thing, okay, you guys? So they said, so these... Stupid Rastas believe that Eile Selassie is the, is the Lion of Judah, the Book of Revelations? Well then let's, let's plan a visit for Eile Selassie to go visit these Rastafarians in Jamaica and they can see their God and see it's all a bunch of BS. So Eile Selassie went to Jamaica and, and opened the fifth seal. The fifth seal, sob before the altar, those that had been slain for the word of Jah and the testimony which they held. The first thing Jah did when he went to Jamaica was he went to the cemetery and laid down a wreath in memory of all the people that have died for Ethiopia and everything. And they cried with a loud voice saying, O Master, how holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell in the earth? And there was given unto them each a white robe. The white robe is, is, means like a, a reward. And so one of the things Selassie did was he went around Jamaica and he gave the Rasta elders and, and, and some other people awards, gave them white robes, and, you know, and, and, and saying unto them an implication because of this, that, uh, that they should rest a little while like until their fellow servants and brethren, because the last will be first, the first will be last. So like, you know, the... The Rosses of Jamaica were the, the last getting it first, and now we, the first, need to get it last. Brother and, uh, should be killed even as they were and should be fulfilled. So that was in 1965. There's lots of footage. I, had, I've, I have lots of the footage on my playlists and Bob, any Bob Marley documentary. Like it's all, the it did not work. It did, they tried, they thought it would shut down Rasta and it became like this big huge thing that still is celebrated today and Rasta's knew more than ever that Jah was the Lion of Judah is, uh, it, it, it. when Eile Selassie I saw the Rasta's chanting he, could, he had to go back inside the airplane and pray and cry and get a grip and then come back out and he saw all the Rastas and, every, and the microphones handed to him and he, and he said through an interpreter Holy priests and warriors are the dreadlock Rastafari. I am he. So then he totally put his stamp of approval on the whole thing and just and driving around, waving at people. And Rita Marley looked in his hand and saw the marks when Jah was hung on the cross. He's not the reincarnation of Jesus, but he had that mark in his hand to fulfill scripture. Jah has mysterious ways. The sixth seal is when it all comes together. Herbert Armstrong tells people in 1975 Jah will come. And uh, in 1974, Eile Selassie was deposed by a coup of students from his university. And, and they, they ended the 3,000 year old dynasty of kings and, and put a communist ruler on the throne and said, and, and uh, they they uh, revealed they showed look they're start they showed the world look Eile Selassie is not a good emperor they're starving people in the in the certain part of Ethiopia and he's spending all this money on on schools and buses and planes and all this stuff when there's people starving Eile Selassie was right the way you solve these problems is you build a future for people you teach a man to fish he eats for a lifetime you give him fish he eats for a day. So that they were wrong. They thought they could do a better job and everything got worse. There was more war, more starvation. Everything got worse, not better. Eile Selassie was right. 
So the opening of the sixth seal, there would be earthquakes and like there was the biggest earthquakes the world had ever seen. Things have only gotten worse since then. The sixth seal is the beginning of the apostasy. It's uh, when the worldwide church of God breaks apart. It was taught among all nations and all tongues and people. And and uh, Eile Selassie disappeared from history. And between 74 and 75, there, there was... Uh, there, there was all these earthquakes and everything, and it's, it just it began, it ended. So the church in Sardis is everything before 1930. Rastafari ha started in 1930 when Eile Selassie was given the crown of Ethiopia. The Rastas saw that and knew this is it, this is the Lion of Judah. And Rastafari was designed and made in 1930. And that ended the, the church in Sardis. And, and this is, that's, it says this in the book of Revelations. What is it? Chapter 3? Chapter 2? Chapter 3? The church in Sardis is the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the Catholic Church. It's organized religion of the times of old. And the church of Sardis is replaced with the church in Philadelphia. And, and that Jah would be given a new name, and that's Eile Selassie, not Jesus, but the new name, Eile Selassie. The name has to be the name of God. Eile Selassie means the power of the Trinity, the Trinity being Jah. From New, from new Jerusalem, Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, means new flower, the new Jerusalem. Uh, fulfills all the scriptures, uh, Psalm 87, on and on and on and on and on. And uh, begins the, uh, the church in Philadelphia from 1930 to 1975. And then the, then the sixth seal is opened and starts the era of Laodicea. We're still in the era of Laodicea. There's still earthquakes. There's still all these problems. That's chapter 6 of the book of Revelations. Way later is the opening of the seventh seal. We're still waiting for that to happen, to start, to start the millennium of peace.